whole idea was to get a coon hound and name this Blue Tick Brewery. Uh, he's a rescue dog. We got him from Boone, North Carolina. Apparently he was attacked in a bear hunt. Had um, his whole side ripped wide open, his ears and nose and face all messed up. He went through some surgery. It took about three months for him to recover and then we, uh, we went out there and picked him up. So he's been a perfect fit since, so happiest dog ever. Uh, out of high school, I was a mechanic. I went back to school to, uh, to kind of further my career. I didn't really want to be a mechanic anymore. And I had always worked in kitchens or bars or things like that, so I, I thought maybe I'd be good as a chef, and I decided to go to culinary school when I was about 25. That was a big turning point in my life, and, and I, uh, I found something I really loved, uh, food, and, and I was very creative and, and good at it. So got the opportunity to move to Tennessee to work for Blackberry Farm, which is probably one of the best uh, lodging in North America. Um, I was there for almost four years, decided it was, it was time to chalk off the last piece of my bucket list, which was to start my own business. I had gotten into brewing beer pretty heavily, started a homebrew club, and that kind of grew into a, a community that started to back behind all this home brewing and craft brewing. and opened the brewery um, back in 2012 I started. Got this location and clean it all up. It was a mess when we got here. And uh, it took us about a year to build a brewery and we opened to the public in uh, April of 2014. Our styles of beer are very uh, chef centric. We make beer that pairs with food and we make beer with food in mind as well. Uh, that's really the, the idea behind our product is, is we can all make a pale ale or a brown or, or uh, you know, simple beers like that. Um, what we're looking for is, is food that we can, we can now incorporate into our daily lives and our, our dinners and our lunches. Even breakfast, I guess. <laughs> I think there's a common misconception that um, you, know, you can get into the brewing industry and just make millions. Uh, it's hard work. It uh, can devastate a family. It can, it can make you wake up in the morning and wonder why you're doing it when you can't afford to pay your bills um, and you're, you're just you know, scraping by most of the time. But as long as you have a pig-headed determination about it um, and you love what you do, you're gonna grind through that. And, and sooner or later, yeah, you can make millions of dollars, and, and big breweries do. But these small nano breweries, man, they're busting their pumps just to make a dime. Um, but they're doing it with a, a sense of pride, and, and they're humble about it as well. Um, that's, I think that's part of the, a culture and an industry that, that doesn't exist in a lot of the, the, the jobs out there. Um, we, we have a co-op of about 290 members and all of those people uh, have different skill sets or do different things in their communities. They basically put their faith in me that I was going to do what I said I was going to do and build a brewery. Um, and they've helped come in and helped in so many as, uh, facets of uh, like tearing down a barn down in Vonor just so we could get wood to build tables. They came in, they did electrical work, they did plumbing, painting, anything that we could possibly do that the city would allow us to do, we did. All these folks are, they're just great people who enjoy craft beer and enjoy sitting around talking to each other and talking about local politics or what's going on in their lives uh, and enjoying a, you know, an amazing beer to go with it. It's, a, it's long days, long hours, uh, very rewarding, and um, you know, the end result is, is the opportunity to sit down, hang out with your friends, and, uh, and enjoy a good pint of beer, and go home feeling proud that you made something amazing and you've done something 